Well, this is session two of real time, and what are we going to do? First, let me uh, say a really big thanks for all the guys that's been watching my videos. Uh, you guys are helping me out a lot to get to this point, and I have a lot of uh, comments saying that, hey, thanks, Frank, you know, thanks for the videos. Uh, it's been very helpful, uh, somewhat motivational, and this is exactly what I want to really get off my chest. Um, I think it's been great. Um, we're sitting at the point where just um, getting just shy of 3,000 download for my videos now off of Gumroad channel and it's uh, it's been quite incredible. I want to keep this series continuing and uh, we have two series now. I have the 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 fully painted ones where I just take a take a painting from start to finish and show you all the step, all the decision making, all the you know the visual development things that I will go through and this is the second series which I'm really quite uh, fond of. Um, it's the real-time painting with just me talking in the background and I paint at the same time. It's something that I wanted to wanted to, to do like a, a weekly thing where I talk a little bit about um, what matters to me in the art world and also I'll give you guys a little bit of insight and and uh, just uh, things about what I do uh, as a professional artist. Um, so we'll jump right in, and I'll I'll start here uh, with the uh, uh, something of a of a blank canvas. All right. So quickly, I already know that this is an exploration session, so I don't really know. What exactly I'm getting into? It's a bit of um, um, a thumbnail session. We're gonna find out what uh, what kind of image we want. So in my brain, I'm thinking I've been doing Mac for a while. Maybe a, I'll give it another shot. I'll try something out with like maybe a spaceship and a Mac, um, something a little bit sci-fi. Um, but I'm going in thinking of of Dune, you know, sands, uh, sand dunes and Kind of a little bit more desert-y area. I'm still going in very harshly with the black and whites, uh, creating contrast right off the bat. Basically, anything that's, that put paint in the canvas in a hurry is going to help us establish things that much quicker. So I already have a, a rough image in my head. I want to get it out and then start exploring for other options. So I don't want to get my first idea to be my only idea instead I want a couple of them on the way so I can have a decision of uh, whether this is going in the right direction I want or if there's a better option so a couple of topics that we want to do today uh, one thing is to to find obviously is to find an image that we can maybe use later we can progress we can take it further into a finished illustration and also I want to answer some of the questions I've been getting on my YouTube channels. Uh, also, I'm getting a lot of feedback on, on Facebook. This is really what I want. I want uh, you guys to be able to talk to me uh, directly. And if you guys have any suggestions, any concerns, anything that you want to see in my future videos, be sure to tell me because I had a lot of great feedback about what to talk about and uh, what, what are the kind of things that you guys are interested in. We'll get into that a little bit later. Right now, I'm just to uh, just want to establish a little bit of a, a mountain or a little bit of structure in the back. So I rarely ever paint portraits. A lot of the environments, they are done in a landscape uh, fashion. It, it allows you to get that really wide camera view of all the things that's happening in the in the background in the environment. So I really a lot of the times I'm working with a 16 by line uh, aspect ratio landscape painting because it's kind of um, really it's just a little by default that's what I go to so it's quite interesting trying to do something that's a little bit more portrait kind of like a poster um, portrait aspect ratio if you will um, one of the questions uh, that I got was I was asked to describe the learning curve of concept art making if you watch the first session of real time. I talked a little bit about how I got started 
um, from art school and how I got started with, you know, getting into the industry. Um, I worked hard and I was lucky and, you know, all that stuff. But the ner- actual learning curve of getting from zero to being able to do concept art had a lot of um, little details, uh, little tips that I wanted to, to share with you guys. Because it wasn't just a smooth curve. It wasn't just a, f- a straight line. You go from zero and then you gradually add on to it. No, it, it had some points. It had some plateaus and then things that just wasn't working. If we were to really look at ground zero of how does anyone you know start getting into this kind of stuff, the, you sort of have to go back to um, the tools of being an artist. You You were... Uh, sketching as a kid or you just like painting watercolor or anything and you maybe had art classes uh, in high school and things like that so that's really the the ground zero the point before you discover concept art and what it really means to to you after that maybe you're browsing online and you you're browsing you know in shops and you find out this thing called a tablet so that's where everything starts. That's like the, the point zero. Before you get a tablet, you're not really a concept artist yet. And then if you're a high school kid, you have a tablet. Basically, you already made it. You're a concept artist. Congratulations. But to get there, there's a few more steps, right? I think when I started to try this thing out and think that mm, maybe this is something I can do, uh, it was already after high school. Um, I bought my first tablet and... I thought, hey, I need some brushes. And I was watching these videos online of um, these concept artists. I didn't really know what concept art really was, but there are really people making videos um, on concept art. So people like uh, Fen Zhu, people like uh, Baron Terry, um, who else, Dylan Cole. So these are the guys that first started making videos um, uh, on you know concept art making and I bought a few Noman DVDs uh, yeah I, I think another one I got was uh, map painting uh, series from from Noman which was really good and it, they had a lot of just fundamental stuff that's just basic concept art painting because you sort of have to be good at concepting stuff out if you're going to be doing map painting. If you can't compose a picture to save your life, mapping techniques are not really going to help you that much. So I was I was really going deep down into those videos and I got I downloaded brushes to help me along as well because all the, the Photoshop default brushes, I don't know it was Photoshop 7 or something back then. Well it was, uh, it, the, the default brushes wasn't cutting it and if I was not using a tablet then it would it would never work, it really work. So, learning curve, you have to get the tools out of the way. You you buy a Wacom tablet. Um, ideally, you want an Intools. If you don't have an Intools, maybe a Bamboo. As a starting point, it's not so bad. But eventually, you want to be able to at least upgrade to an Intools. The size doesn't matter. You can get a medium or, or small. I actually think the large one might be a little bit too big if you're just waving your arm around. Um, as a beginner, that might be a little bit too big. But um, so get the tools out of the way, and if you can, uh, study some art fundamental courses. If you don't know anything about art fundamentals, like I was, it, it will you will start off thinking you're all the shit and you're painting all this um, landscapes with your custom brushes and you're feeling like you're doing a great job, but you can't really build on top of that without having a very strong fundamental understanding of fine arts or just general art making. Art fundamentals, I'm talking about perspective, color theory, composition, uh, you know, creating contrast, all the basic stuff that every artist, whether or not you're a concept artist, whether or not you're making this thing for a living, if you want to do good art, this is the stuff that you really have to just grind through. It's kind of like learning one plus one before you learn to derive or do all the, you know, parabola stuff. You have to be able to get the basics down. Otherwise, there's no way to progress past that point. 
I want to uh, introduce you guys. If you if you don't know about this already, uh, there's a really great tutorial, uh, a written tutorial um, that's published by Ernie Nicholas Jansen, and it was way old. This thing is ancient. It is uh, 2005, and to, until today, it is still very relevant. His website is AndroidArts.com, but just go on Google and search PSG Art Tutorial. Just type in those letters, PSG Art Tutorial, and you can find out all about this fundamental crash course, if you will, that composes almost everything that you need to know to get started. You don't have to read a, a 300 page book or go to art school for two years. Um, if you understand everything on this page, it is really that good. So go through it, read everything like it's the Bible, and try your best to understand it because no one's going to suddenly learn our, our fundamentals in an hour or two. It's actually taking, it's going to take a long time for it to really sink in. But if you want to get an idea of what everything there is to know, then go to this website, check out the page. Uh, it, I know it helped me start as an artist, and I use this um, material when I was teaching in Sheridan, and I still use that when I was teaching at uh, Centennial. It's just extra reading um, material, and basically it should be had printed and handed out to everyone. Uh, PSG Art Tutorials, search it up. Uh, the other thing is that when you're starting off, it's it's important not to get too fast. It's important to get, to really settle down and learn instead of thinking that uh, you can just make art every day and just you know, submit, submit. You're not um, good enough in a way to prove anything. So it's, it's sort of counterintuitive thinking that, you know, I'm making really good progress, so I must be doing really, really well. But you, you've got to settle down a little bit and think about how how actual how actually early game are we are we talking about here if you're starting like a few months into concept art and you get all the tutorials and you get all the all the stuff you're you gotta realize there's a lot of guys that's been doing this for years and these are the guys that you're gonna be eventually competing with so just get your ego in check and really sit down and try to get something that's that's really um, really gonna settle in as your technique we're all learning from the masters we're all learning from people that's been doing this for for a long time and every each few years it gets a little bit easier because some shortcut was found some new techniques was shared and uh, the new students will always get access to the latest and greatest which is really, really good because they really need that. Everyone needs that to catch up. And some of these young kids, they catch up really quickly. So um, if you're starting off, just uh, don't, be, don't be bothered by any of that stuff. Settle down and learn your techniques. If in doubt, learn the fundamentals because these are the stuff that's gonna, you're going to carry it with you until you die. There's no way someone's going to take this technique away from you because this has been... The art fundamentals has been there for thousands of years. If you learn this, I don't care what your style is, you're going to be a pretty good damn artist. So starting off, that's going to take a long time. If you're doing things well, you will see improvements very fast. You'll see improvements. Every painting, almost. Every little painting, if you try to put your effort into it, you're going you're gonna to see some improvement and you're going to feel that you're slowly progressing into the right area. So after that, we're gonna go into like the mid games, the mid games where I'm just uh, where I concern it to be an area where you're able to make paintings and you're able to paint almost what you want, but you're not professional level yet. So that's mid game. How are you gonna get through that? Because this is a plateau. This is that you're not new to this thing. But you're not super pro at it. You gotta think about do you have a style? Do you have an art style? Have you done this enough? 
that a style has found you or have you found a style that suits you? This is uh, what I call the grinding and finding stage of concept art making is that you gotta grind through not only this 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 bottleneck this plateau but you also gotta be able to find your area of ex expertise you know what's going to really make your art unique to to other people and being able to also look back on what you're doing and identify your strength and weaknesses as an artist so you just take every painting that you've done and you look at it like what's your strength like are these um are these character paintings are these landscape paintings anything special about them like what what is something that you're good at your go-to subject matter so to speak and what are your weaknesses because everyone doesn't matter how good they are they have a strength and weaknesses maybe the scale is you know comparable but uh, they all have something that they do really well and something that they're a little shying away from and that's completely fine but being able to look at your art critically really helps you get through this part you know the mid games of grinding and finding you gotta have the the perseverance to grind you know do this thing endlessly there's a thousand hours rule on doing something really well um, I'm not a big fan of the those rules but it does take time it takes a lot of time and not all of it is going to be fun if you stop doing something when it's fun, when it's not fun anymore, you're not going to be pro at it. You know, it's not, not every painting is going to go your way. You're going to get frustrated a lot. Sometimes it's not going to work out. You're going to throw away some paintings, but that's completely fine. You know, you're going to be throwing away endless paintings. Um, and then we start hitting an area where you're feeling that you're, you, you got over that point a little bit and you got a job, you get a, get a gig, you get a few contracts, and you're feeling really good. Now we're getting into, um, again, it's still mid-game, but you know we're getting close to the really long, drawn-out end-game where you're a good artist, and people tell you you're a good artist, and you know you're a good artist, and that your confidence as an artist just grows with it. You know? you're, you're starting to find your zone you're getting close to um, knowing what you're capable of and that's really good it's a really good feeling I'm you know congratulations you've made it but uh, we're getting to the end game where you're gonna take your art to an area uh, where you gotta think about profitability you know creating value you're not just doing this doodles anymore you're not doing this for fun anymore instead you're being a pro and being a pro in the industry means that you got to think about clients and then getting gigs and then networking, finding jobs and, and eventually landing your, your, your dream, you know, position. So that becomes very important as, uh, as an end game. But this thing never ends. It, it doesn't just suddenly, you don't win the game. No one has really just win the game. I mean, sort of you win the game when you buy a house and you get a Ferrari, things like that. But, Becoming a master is a, is a lifetime thing. You don't just suddenly get there and think, oh, well, I beat the game. And on to the next one, you know. So the end game really is that you've pushed through a lot of hours of art making. And now you've got to think about how are you going to really do this for a living, you know. What kind of life, what kind of lifestyle you want to live as an artist. It's very real because this is a profession. This is not a... a a f just a fun thing that you do on weekends anymore you've made this much progress you've you've sacrificed so much and spent so much time doing this goddamn thing you're gonna make it your life so you live and breathe art and you think about how do I use this skill to to my advantage how is this gonna translate into I don't know a, a two-bedroom condo down the line it becomes very real. It becomes a part of your life. That's the learning curve, you know, from zero to all the way to, you know, making progress, making profitability, creating value for your work. Eventually, you're developing your own IPs, you're pitching ideas to producers, or you're just doing your own thing, or you're just creating a lot of value, generating value doing your work. This is another area 
where it gets more into business because your art is there before you get to this part man before your art is really good and you're being identified with a valuable um concept artist you shouldn't really be thinking about buying a, a condo with your earnings because you're, you're not going to have enough so before you ever get here you got to grind through in this stage of mid game finding your style finding your zone your market that sort of thing and if you don't see a market for your art it doesn't mean that it's not there it just means that you haven't found it yet if you do something that's a little bit different don't be afraid to push it further because I, I firmly believe that we as an artist don't have to be the same we have to be different and we have to find our our area of expertise and really push that really push push a market out of it there has been a lot of examples where artists doing things differently and before they get to that point man they are just struggling they're just doing this thing endlessly days after days thinking if they're ever they're ever going to make it but once you do it's very very rewarding i think this might be one of the most rewarding profession there is i mean how many jobs do you have that you can truly do something and feel really proud of it today just just everything's worked out and you're just really proud of this and you can see your result you can see it on the screen and you can show it to other people this is what i did this is amazing right so this is really going to be one of the most rewarding things that you're going to do um and the learning curve to get there it's not a it's not a flat curve it's actually uh it it's faster when you're starting off and it gets gradually it just gradually flattens out and it takes a lot more time and it's kind of like an rpg game where you can get to level 20 really quickly but the curves when it gets to i don't know level 60 and something you're you're wasting a lot of time and you're making a lot of mistakes just for that little inch of gain but in a way that it's not like rpg that it's not like you put time into it and and just like mindlessly grind but this thing you actually gotta think about it. you actually gotta do things in a smart way you know you gotta find relevant information and you gotta dig dig out the relevant information from all the other ones which are going to distract you um from my last video i talked about how important it is to know where you want to go and and really know that who you want to be it's uh, finding a goal setting a goal and don't be afraid to work towards it because that's the only way that you're going to make it everyone else is competing with you on the same path and you got to be clear of your directions and uh, you got to find your directions rather sooner than later because we only have 24 hours in a day and there's only there's so many time so much time that we have that we can use to to generate value I hope that answers the question to a to some certain degree, but um, it really isn't. It's not the easiest thing. Like uh, it takes a lot of time. So so every every um, artist has to go through at least the grinding stage. Um, the stages where they're not creating. Um, enough value or if they get a little bit too comfortable stuck in the job and really we have to almost struggle with the time that we have to make this happen because everyone have a different agenda it, it, you know some people may be a little bit luckier or some people not so lucky but the luck is really self-generated in a way that you can create luck you can also create a market who appreciate your your efforts who appreciate your art so for for example what I'm doing here in these videos is that I'm showing you my process of of finding um, finding an image if I just paint endlessly like I, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just brushing away and creating these shapes and some of the shapes work some of the shapes doesn't work but how to generate value is that you 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 constantly look for good paintings good paintings are not going to just come to you naturally i have may have an idea may have a hint of what it can be 
but before I apply the knowledge, uh, before I apply the the decision making into uh, making actually uh, making a good image, none of this is worth a dollar. None of these um, these thumbnails that you're looking at on the screen right now is worth anything before it becomes something. This is a process where we end at a result. Before you get to that result, before you you know go through all the grind and finding style and all that stuff. Before you get to that point, we might not think much about our achievements. Before you know, get a job, no one is actually going to pay us to do a painting, and that is hard to stomach sometimes. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. I'm just doing this thumbnail thing for hours and hours. And I don't. Sometimes I don't find an image. Sometimes I just find a, a not a very good image. I just find like an okay, mediocre image. And I gotta choose: Am I going to develop it, develop this painting, or am I just gonna start over and try something else? This is really not working out. I don't know. It's a. It's a. It depends on how much time you have, and depends, I guess, your mood at the time. But I've done sessions where I just. Draw and sketch endlessly, and it's just not happening. For if you're looking on the screen, I'm I'm changing things rapidly, and because I'm 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 know that this is. If I can rate this from a scale of one to ten, ten being I'm very satisfied with, a one being is absolute shit, then it's probably sitting at like a three or four. But I'm constantly trying to push this number f higher. You know, I'm trying to make decisions where. That part is not working. Let me do something about that. So you're constantly doing all these changes、um, in the small scale, in just like a small thumbnail scale thing. Also, you can take the same approach to your your general learning curve. If something is not working out for you, it doesn't mean that you gotta be just dead set on doing this thing until you die. You can just Choose to change it. You can just change your direction. Mind blowing, I know. You can change your direction to something to find something that might suit you better. So if you're not a very good, say,、um, renderer, if you just like you have good ideas but you just can't render it somehow, maybe try ZBrush. Try 3D. Try to make things a little. If you're a little bit, you know, more logical thinking, you're a little bit better at math and just you know. Uh, 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 those kind of technical things, and you, you might be able to find a niche market, or you just find your own way of getting there. There's a lot of ways to become a professional artist, and I'm not saying concept art is the best way, where it's it's just a way. You know, it's it's a relatively good way if you know how to do like paintings and things like that. But there's many other ways. Like I tried map painting, and I tried the、uh, visual effects. I just you know randomly dabbled into fluid simulation, 3D stuff.、Um, I find that this is the thing that I happen to do、um, faster. Not even like so much better, but just faster, and it works for me and it speaks to me a little bit better. So I just stuck to it. You know, you might be able to find something that you do much better than concept art, and I say go for it. You don't have to be, you know, stuck here. Doing a thing that you might not like, I think having the interest and you know being able to enjoy it is a lot better than not being able to enjoy it. So if you enjoy doing 3D more, say do 3D.、Uh, eventually, I think、uh, eventually I'm going to turn this painting、um, into something that I develop develop more. Maybe I'll use a little bit of ZBrush to to get a. A base structure because I want to put something in the background there, to、um, to help me establish the the whole area. So I kind of like the first one I got there, where the back the back of the the mountain has a big giant structure, maybe a spaceship of some nature. So I eventually try to model that in 3D and、uh, see what I get. So the last session. We talked a little bit about、um, how much talent there is involved in doing this. I think I was making a speech about how there really isn't any talent at all, 
I think it's a it's a little bit of a mix between um, just being being smart about learning and uh, being able to grind through your obstacles and get to what you want. I want to also uh, talk about some of the guys that I graduated with, um, some of the guys that uh, that was in Sheridan, some of the very good artists that I know. Uh, one of these guys uh, started a company, very appropriately. Uh, titled, they're called One Percent Talent, and they're actually going to a lot of the shows, a lot of uh, conventions that uh, that we go to over the years, Fan Expo, Anime Expo in the states. Uh, I'm pretty sure Comic Con they go to. There's a lot of uh, uh, really great designs that they have. Just go to go on Google and search One Percent Talent. It's a very nice uh, shop. So they still print these amazingly illustrated T-shirts. And uh, I, th I think our friends all, like, all we all bought them and we all wear them to different uh, different conventions and it's really really awesome. So uh, go to their website One Percent Talent and uh, look at some uh, some T-shirts. These are all handmade and they and they have uh, little monster designs and some of them are glow in the dark. So that is um, something that. Uh, just like you're you're graduating out of animation school, you you know you can um, do a lot of different things with the the same um, the same starting point. We all sort of came from the same school, but it's really fun to look at people doing different things. We have a lot of guys that's designing for animations. We have people in Pixar, uh, people in the states doing uh, casino games. I'm stuck here doing concept for some reason, but uh, yeah, just it doesn't really matter where you are at, at this point you know you could be in art school or you could just be at home not in art school it doesn't matter we have a lot of people that self-taught and they're doing amazing concept art in really big name studios and all the power to them you don't really need to be I don't know classically trained or or art school trained um, the other thing Wow, I'm talking really fast. But uh, um, the other thing I want to talk about is that if you're in art school, one thing to keep in mind is to not. Um, it was your, you're learning from this master artist. It's important not to copy their style exactly. You know, when you're first starting off, sure, copying is the fast, fastest way to, to sort of get good. But um, it's also a very dangerous. It's very dangerous, um, slippery slope, rather, that you can just fall into doing almost exactly what the people that you're learning from are doing. Um, one of the, the things I talked about in my last tutorial, the actual painting tutorial, was that um, I talked about the right way of doing studies versus um, just copying straight on. So we have a lot of artists that's actually copying um, master artists, so they call it master copies. So they, they copy it exactly as if they were um, they were studying it inch by inch. And it's picture perfect. And they can do it really, really well. But the problem with that is that you're actually jumping, you're skipping a lot of the decision making. So what what the original artist has done in his own thinking, in his own decision making, is that he rendered this image from his, from his head. It's like a render engine where you go through these passes. There's like a, a color pass, color theory pass. You know, you decide to go, you know, primary color or, or secondary, or there's like a, or there's like a three colors, like a triad color, or there's a lot of balancing and, and push and pull from his own rendering engine that you just completely skip through you know there's a lot of like exploring the light going from bigger shapes to smaller shapes these are all the things that the original art the original artist has to go through that if you're just making a master copy uh, you might not have to so you're jumping to the answers you're jumping to the answer sheet instead of having to write out the equation and do the calculations yourself. 
So you're actually not getting enough. You're not getting the most out of just copying uh, the master artist. So if you're in an art school and and you're you know you're you're doing these studies, uh, just be mindful of that. One of the things that I like to do when I was uh, doing studies and when I was starting off is that I will, I will never copy um, the paintings exactly. I will always choose just one thing, one pass. So you know, for all these paintings, they go through like a lot of stages. Just pick one and 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 copy that. What I mean is, if you like the color of uh, some of these studies, some of these paintings, then just take that color. Take that maybe this is the warm color and it has that you know glowy uh, dusk feeling in the background. Just use that and use that color scheme and apply it to your own painting. Apply it to something completely different, a complete different subject matter. Because when you do it this way, you're not skipping all the decision making. You're not skipping how to get from one to ten. You know, you're just taking a very small portion of the original painting and you're trying to apply it to real life settings. Real life settings means that you paint your own painting without, you know, without people hand holding this for you. And if you like a certain rendering style, if you like a certain texture, then do a fresh new painting, even a small scale study, just to just to mimic that exactly, just to do that that one thing really really close everything else is just fair game you can do it's encouraged to do something completely different but I find that if you're able to isolate this you can actually learn a lot more you can actually learn in in real painting instead of just mindlessly copying because you could be copying I don't know 30 paintings without learning a thing you can be copying exactly until the end of day maybe you won't actually learn how to compose your own painting. So whenever you're doing some study like that, think about it in a way that can, that can be applied to your own painting. Because that's exactly eventually you're going to be doing anyways. You know, no one's going to hire you to do a master copy. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, when you're learning fundamentals, um, there's a lot of ways to approach it. Some people go to art school and they get um, these schools to, to give them classes and, and these classes divide into um, perspective and, and uh, colors or layout or they call it layout for uh, the environments. It's when you're being exposed to everything at once, all these different classes. It it's not saying that you need to be good at all of them. It's sort of just there when you're in art school. They're just throwing things at you and see what catches. You know, see what what you are actually really interested in. And if you're really interested in something, take initiative. You know, be proactive. Take initiative. If you like this thing, explore further. Um, art school is really not about getting the marks. The marks doesn't matter. If you pass, if you care about the degree, if you care about a diploma, passing is is fair game. Passing is the the bare minimum that you you should get. And anything beyond that, I don't I don't think it matters. I've haven't had one studio or one client says, hey, can I see your art school transcripts? No, there's no one ever asked that. Not a single soul. So what I'm saying is that you have all these classes in art school. Just try to find your place. Try to try to look at these things and see what really you're at you're like you like doing. Some classes you just really like, some classes you really don't like, and that's fine. I had anthropology in um, animation, which I enjoyed, but it has nothing to do with art. And then I had English, which I failed twice, so I had to take it a third time. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, it's quite weird. You have uh, you have different. And I have also have animation class. It has something to do with art now, but uh, we're we're talking about um, classes that I had 
probably paid money for and skipped. Uh, not exactly proud of it, but when you get the whole package, it doesn't mean that when you get a combo, it doesn't mean you have to eat all of it. You know, you can pick and choose. Be a, you know, I can be a picky eater if I want to, but just be um, mindful of what you choose because you gotta be at least good at one thing. You know, you gotta be a, at least specializing in one area where you're just dominating over there. And um, being good in art school doesn't really mean that much, but you should also try to be try to take advantage of it. Try to you know build all your peers and and paint and paint with them, help each other out because these are the people eventually that's going to be in the in the same industry as you are. Um, at least some of them. So it's it pay, it pays off to staying in a good relationship with them. And when you get into the industry, you realize it's a small industry. It's a really small industry. Everybody knows everybody. So, you know, don't be a dick, basically. I think at this point, I'm just going to... Uh, I'm talking about the painting here. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to make this into somewhat of a of a... I think a Destiny fan art thing. There's some robot and and there's some structure in the back. Still brushing away. So, if you watched my uh, thumbnail making video part two, I go through a few thumbnails where I'm just using light and shadow. I'm just using black and white purely to develop these images. And that's a really fast way of doing it. Um, I actually uh, started doing this process a lot more now because it's a really good way to find interesting shapes. It's a really good way to establish your, your painting early on. And you only have to take about 10 to 15 minutes to do something uh, to, to really make an image. And you can be able to tell that whether or not this is going to be um, a good composed, a well composed image or not. So it you know, it's a fair, it's a pretty fair trade if you're going to spend 10 minutes to see if this idea flies or not. So in a way that you're not wasting an hour or five hours of your precious time painting something that just wasn't composed right in the first place. How I was talking about, you know, changing areas of the painting and making this one a little bit better, you know, from a scale of 1 to 10 how to push this one more towards a 10 versus a 5 because everyone every single painting that I see here on the on my screen here they're they probably like a 4 or 5 but you got to make decisions to push that further cuz you're not going to get a 10 right off the bat you just got to grind through it and explore different options and try to try to get this one a little bit further along there's never a point there's never really a, a point you need to stop but just um, when you think that you got close enough, you can start picking out which one you like, and then you know blow it up big and try to try to develop it a little bit more. Another thing about this uh, pushing numbers is that sometimes if everything doesn't work, just don't be afraid to throw out the whole page. If you get a whole page of fours, then you know, if you start off with a bad thumbnail, uh, you have a much higher chance of ending up with a bad painting if you d decide to to uh, go further with it. So this is the, the stage where you're getting most of your composition and compositional elements done, and you're getting most of your idea done because some of these can get fairly uh, detailed. So for what I'm doing here, I think one of the one of the thumbnails could take up to like 15 to 20 minutes. So at this point, 15 to 20 minutes, if you still don't have an image, then it's probably not happening. And you can you can push and pull, you can break it up and, and re, uh, reconstruct all you want. But if your idea is just not that strong, then you're going to end up with a mediocre painting. Um, that That's okay in some regard because if you remember in the in the last uh, real time, I talked about how people throw away paintings all the time, and if this is just you're just doing this to push yourself, that's fine. You're gonna get something out of it. You always learn something after each painting, 
but if you're if you're working for you know working on a budget or you're working on a budget of time then you got to be mindful that doing this 10 minute sketch is going to save you you know hours of work if you just start start right off on, on the canvas and you don't do this kind of uh, exploring it's going to be a little bit more difficult you're going to spend a little bit more time you know moving things around trying to do get your compositional things to work so um yeah thumbnail is really you already know how important it is so w even when you're working with a client um usually clients like to have decisions they usually, usually like to make choices so you you don't want to present them with one you want to present them with multiple different choices and then so this thumbnail stage would serve you very well as the first deliverable so you give them a sheet saying hey these are the these are the possible shots that i have uh what do you like so they'll, they'll tell you which one they like or maybe a little bit of this and then four and five and and throw a little bit of one in there so then they'll give you a, a somewhat of an idea somewhat of a direction to go to so and maybe this this one sheet of thumbnails only took you about you know half an hour to an hour ideally then that's half an hour of, or one hour of time you you, uh, you 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 put into good use and if you're billing them um, I don't know by by days or by hours the more time you can save and provide them with good work you can the more time you save them it's actually actually going to help you so you don't need to drag on a painting and they and think that oh, I'm going to take two days to do this thumbnails and it's going to be really good no just just be really f efficient and you know build them half a day for the for the thumbnails and then you know develop it into a into a very good uh, painting spend the rest of the the day doing research and 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 um reference and stuff like that they most of the clients understand and they they will appreciate it because they rather have someone efficient than someone who's really fast or someone who's really slow so you gotta be able to balance out that timeline and really provide them with the instant feedbacks and and give them choices and plenty of choices the way i do it is that i never complain about um, revisions i used to get a lot of them on a flat rate now I work by per day, so if, um, if it's nothing super unreasonable, that no more time is really going to add a, add on top of the the my original schedule that I provide them with. But if it gets to twenty plus revisions, they will understand that revisions takes time, and through all this communication, you don't even need to um, to renegotiate into I don't know. Uh, more more money for revisions or anything like that because you're already working on a per day basis if they want you to do more work it's going to be billed i think it's pretty simple and clear and you can write it into your contract and your invoices and it'll be fine but um just be reasonable basically that's what i'm saying it's much better to be efficient than it is to to rush or to drag on for too long um, and when in doubt just keep a line of communication open it's the best way to deal with things if some clients that's just it's just not working out then you gotta have an exit strategy as well I don't know bill for the time that you actually spent and even if you get gouged a little bit it doesn't really matter that much your professional artist their professional client you guys you know work it out Um, freelance artists have to deal with all this stuff, uh, like billing, invoicing, uh, dealing with clients, things like that. And it's the major difference. It's really the, the major difference between a freelance artist and say a full-time artist in the studios, because the, when you're a full-time artist in the studio, you have, um, HR and you have your team to protect you a little bit and you're getting feedbacks directly from your art directors which is really good uh, so you don't have to you know write as much emails you don't have to worry so much about you know getting paid uh, your paycheck comes you know once every two weeks and it's pretty standard 
So you're, you're never really caught on, you're caught by surprise in a way. You're, you're never living a month without pay if you're working full time in a studio. I guess the other spectrum is that when you're working in a studio, you, you have less time to do your own art. So your time is actually being bought by the studio that you're in. So you're not gonna sit in your studio chair and start painting your own stuff, uh, or unless it's like lunch break or you just mo really motivated. I guess that's fine. But uh, be careful in the contracts, and you know they they usually say that your time is is their time, and whatever you do on the computers during their time is their property. So you can't be you know sending out stuff under NDA and uh, things like that oh man we're really messing up this painting here it used to be kind of clean and now the middle image is just a whole mess it's just dirt and nothing the, if you look at the middle image there that's just a really badly composed image i can i'm struggling to find the focal point maybe the guy over there I'm jumping between all these different um, thumbnails because I'm I'm really what I'm doing is I'm doing one painting out of all of these so I'm not trying to make all of them good I'm just trying to see which one can be taken further this is like a whole sheet of possibilities so I'm really what I'm doing I'm jumping between these to see that if maybe some elements of that can be added to this and, and make this into a more interesting painting Eventually, I'll be picking one, and all the other ones are going to be thrown away. I'm not going to be trying to save um, many paintings. The only, the only reason why I'm working on a certain one is to see if I can use this to, to push it to like a 7 or an 8. If all the other ones are, are 7, maybe I'm trying to put this, put, push this one a little bit further so that I have a better image to, to start from. I was uh, working full time uh, for a majority of my past two years, but I was working in film uh, in the same, I guess, in the same structure, same way as any games or um, art related uh, um, jobs. For for TV shows, um, their pacing for each image is just a little bit faster. Uh, for films, you get a little bit more uh, overtime. Sometimes you gotta work the weekends. You're already working 12 hours a day as standard, so getting more overtime on top of that 12 hours a day uh, it sort of adds up to the to not only the the time spent, but also stress and and everything else. Because imagine being creative for 12 hours a day and then being asked to be also creative, more creative for the, for the three hours extra. It gets really difficult. Yeah, but the good thing is when you're on a contract and you're in-house, you're pretty much set for, for those months. You don't have to worry too much about um, your payment and things like that. They have... Film film studios, film production have their own payroll system, so you get paid every week instead of every two weeks, which is really nice. So you always have money um, coming in, and you feel a little bit more confident about buying stuff, which really what you should be doing is you're saving up for something. You know, you should be planning out your finances. The only thing I really miss from uh, working in games versus working in films was that uh, a lot of the times I was the only illustrator on a film set and I from that I really missed being able to just bounce stuff back and forth between um, studio artists from my just colleagues and friends just having that studio environment I think is really really important Someone that you can paint with, just like in school, you know, someone who's uh, they're they're they have an interest also in you doing well because um, if 
if your department gets hand, handed a, a job, and if you can take, you know, a bulk of the work, it means that there's less that the other guys have to struggle through. So if you just distribute, you know, based on your expertise, who's going to tackle what, it gets very, very intuitive. And I really miss that. I really like doing that. I was, I started off as a, as a concept artist in games. And that's always something that I, I'll, I'll do either through contract or full time at some point. So in my off time, I will continue to just um, work on my my own paintings. Some someone asked me this question actually. They asked me whether or not I paint for fun. I absolutely paint for fun. It's something that I just really enjoy doing. I think you really gotta be um, at least you gotta enjoy painting to 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 have the. Um, all this energy, all this time, the willingness to put in the time. And at least everyone started off at, like that, you know. They started off thinking that they really like painting and there's something they're, they're kind of good at, so they want to make it their uh, profession. But some, uh, through all this struggle, all this hardship and pain, uh, some people lost their interest to paint. And I, I know for a stage, I kind of lost it. I lost the motivation to go home and paint again because I was working way too long, over 60 hours a week on, on stressful stuff. I pretty much thought, you know, painting became just a job now. It really just, you know, tablets. Uh, this is just two of the trade. You know, it's just something I do for a paycheck. And I was looking more and more towards that paycheck and not so much towards uh, um, actually having to grab onto the tablet pen and start painting. There was a stage, I think, uh, two years ago that it really hit hard. And I barely, I just disappeared rather, because I was being, I was very prolific before that stage, um, just constantly coming out with my own designs, my own personal pieces. And then when I started working uh, full time on on movie sets, it, it ended up being something that uh, really ate it, ate into my schedule, and it just really ate into uh, all the personal pieces that I just didn't have time to do anymore. There are pieces that I start, and on the second day, I will completely lose the drive to do them again because I'm just so so tired. You get this fatigue that's hard to shake off of. You know, because you're being asked to be creative, and you can only be creative so much. And it sounds stupid, but your brain actually uses up so much um, energy that you're completely brain dead <laughs> after after work. <laughs> so I can do things that seemingly completely brain dead for hours when I'm not uh, um, on my job. And I'm really glad that uh, eventually I find some uh, balance in my work schedule to, to now I'm, I'm, I'm finding time to do some of these videos and I'm finding more time to do some of my own paintings, which is really, um, really fun, actually. This is, again, getting back to painting for fun. And I think this is really something I want to keep on doing because uh, when you stop painting for fun, you almost you almost stop progressing as an artist because you're you're you suddenly became a technician you're doing um, technical jobs to solve a problem it is our job that don't don't get me wrong this is exactly what we're designed to do we're designed to solve a design problem so we go there we study the brief we come out with a very efficient solution to design whatever it is that we need to design that's, that is our job, but to get good at that, we need to also be be a, be artists. We also also need to be this guy who's constantly pushing the envelope. Because when I go on websites like art stations, now I see just tons and tons of of beautiful new pieces by all the artists, and it's never been. Is, there's there's never been as many artists as it has been right now um, in this day and age. We have 
We have amazing artists coming out of Asia. We have amazing artists that I have never heard of uh, from Brazil and from Sweden. So everyone is doing art, and it's absolutely amazing. And to be to be a part of this this whole uh, new stage uh, of concept art is really exciting because uh we're we're actually as a whole as a whole industry we're developing new styles we're developing new trends and and these are the concept artists that that actually dictate what the next movie is going to actually look like we can you know all these people with visions they're the ones that actually put the thoughts put the script into visual language that everyone else can see there's a lot of power in that. And we all want to progress and and get to the front lines. So if we're an army, then we're constantly having people that's going into the front lines and designing for the the new wave of of visuals and everyone else is catching on to that really quickly. And we're constantly watching the new guys, or watching the masters do their art, uh, do their work, and it's really, really amazing because we see that this is how new and industry artists learn by just studying each other. No one is really doing design in a vacuum. I can guarantee you that uh, the new designs have influences. Uh, from uh, things that's been done before, everyone is helping, and everyone is sort of looking at uh, other artists, other peers. This is how the industry is going, is moving forward so fast. Because when they, whenever there is a technique, whenever there is a new delivery method, where there is a new trend of concept art, I'm pretty sure everyone else is going to catch on very quickly. So, it takes time and it takes effort to be, um, to be doing this, and you just gotta constantly progress. Because the moment you stop creating value and you stop uh, being an artist and you just become a, a full technician, then you're not you're not progressing anymore. You're not um, moving with the industry. So for the past two years that I was working full time. I barely had enough of my own, you know, space. I barely had enough of my own time to to just shut off my brain and I enjoy art. You know, it's very important to enjoy doing this. If you don't enjoy doing this at all and you're just trying to get good so you can get a job as an artist, then you really gotta ask yourself: Is there no better way for you to earn your living, right? If you don't like doing art and you don't like painting. Then you gotta really ask yourself, why are you even, you know, watching this video? Why are you listening to me rambling about, you know, art and and concept and whatever? Because I'm pretty sure there are better ways to make money than art, um, as my parents told me. But uh, it just so it just so happens that this is the thing I want to do, and this is this thing that some of you want to do, and I really respect that. And I do, and I want to help every single one of you to get to where you want to be. So if you, you know, if you ever had doubts, thinking that am I, am I doing this right? Well, I don't know. I I don't even know if I'm doing this right. But it's the thing that we're doing now. And if you enjoy doing it, keep on doing it, right? Um, yeah. It's not really, it's not really rocket science. It's art making. You know, you're not hurting anyone over this, so just go paint some robots, I guess. So we're getting close to the end of my rambling uh, painting session here. I'm going to close this off in a minute. Still messing around with the middle image. Uh, it just turned into a complete mess. Now there's two focal points. I added a robot for some reason. 
The other thing I wanted to uh, ask you guys, actually, is um, I'm already doing uh, critiques for people. So there are some people that talk to me on Facebook and they send their painting over, ask me if I can do a pass on it. Um, this is what we do in the in the studio here as well. We we, we have me and my uh, friends here. We, if we get stuck on something, we'll just uh, pass it along and say, hey, can you do you want to take a pass at it? So it's really a critique uh, paint over uh, thing. But since I'm already doing it, uh, you guys can send uh, a JPEGs to my email. It's frank.f.hong at gmail.com. And every week, um, maybe I'll start a new series that's just on critiquing. And I'll just critique it uh, live or critique it on the Internet so that people can really see what the paint over is, is is all about uh, I don't have a, a Dropbox set up for that right now but just for the sake of uh, doing critiques you guys just send me a, a email of a JPEG a painting that you do right now and uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you uh, very soon on uh, on that so it's basically the same thing that the, the level up group is doing uh, the Fosroda guys who is really helpful um, for a lot of the, the, the artists that's trying to level up. I'll do that as well. And the other thing I wanted to sort of get a feel if anyone's interested in a mentoring program because uh, eventually I will be taking on, I will have a few uh, a mentoring openings, a few positions to, to fill. I'm physically in Vancouver, so if you're in Vancouver, I guess it'll be a little bit easier. But if you're not here, uh, that's fine as well because I can do it over the internet. But uh, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, shoot me an email as well. I'll probably be announcing this later on and do a proper, you know, a whole cover page or mentoring openings and whatever the, uh, it is. But I just want to get a feel over whether or not people are interested in this. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later. And some of the viewers are asking me to do a live stream. So I'll do that this weekend. Or, or the next weekend, so I'll do a find out a time where everyone's actually like awake for me to do a, a live stream, because I'm already doing you know this, this these paintings and stuff live, so it doesn't really cost me anything to start doing a live stream service. But uh, um, I just want to be able to answer questions uh, faster, answer questions in a, in a live manner, and just have just have the flexibility to guide you guys through certain techniques so I'll probably do less rambling in my live sessions and uh, instead talk more on techniques and just uh, showing you guys little uh, bite-sized tip and tricks or just doing you know image development and we can do this together we can just get a bunch of thumbnails together and you know or develop a painting together it'll be a fun little session and to wrap up this week's video, please subscribe to my channel and join us again next week. This is Frank and this video is over.